What is up YouTube? Got an awesome video for you today. Man, we're going to complete Texas today. We're doing some beef ribs. And what are the elements of Texas barbecue? One, the type of rub. Real simple. Salt and pepper. And second, the type of wood. Need some post oak. That's not available where I live at. However, I was in Texas last week and I was able to get my hands on some post oak pellets. Yes, some post oak pellets. So we go do some beef ribs in the old Brunswick. You're going to get it fired up. And we're going to get those babies in there. Yeah, you got to check this out. These are by B and B Better Burning, all 100% natural wood pellet grill fuel, Texas Smokehouse Post Oak. This is not available where I live at. I was in an H E B um, grocery store, and I was uh, buying some items to uh, do the um, ribeyes in my last video, and I saw these bags of pellets. I had to get. <laughs> Four or five of them and uh, so I can have me a nice little supply and also swung by the butcher yes we got a couple slabs beef ribs we're gonna get these babies seasoned up we're gonna get the old Brunswick fired up let's get to cooking 230 yep since there's no 225 we'll go 230 actually let's go 240 because it's cold and I want to compensate for the cold. It's going to be dipping down. It should put us in the neighborhood of uh, 225. Okay, our IT is solid, so we're connected to the network. Man, let's get these ribs prepped. We're going to get the membrane removed and we're going to get them seasoned up and we'll be back. Now that the ribs are ready for seasoning for a binder, I'm going to use olive oil. I primarily use mustard on all my barbecue, but today for this cook, I want to taste the barbecue itself. Not to say that mustard will influence it, but I don't want to take any chances on this cook. To be honest with you, this is the first time I've ever barbecued meat with just salt and pepper. So I want to taste the full flavor of the entire cook. I want to taste the post oak. I want to taste what the meat would taste like with just salt and pepper. Now one rack I will be using just salt and pepper. On the other rack I'll be using my take on a Texas style rub. Only difference is I'm adding a little garlic and a little paprika to the uh, mix. Now this first rack, salt and pepper.
Now I had to do a little trimming on the uh, top part or the meat portion of the rib. But other than that, trimming was very minimal. Outside of removing the membrane, this is pretty much all I had to do to these racks. Now that my second rack's ready, I incorporated my rub into a shaker or empty bottle that I had, uh, which is the salt, pepper, garlic powder, and paprika. Now that we're done with the seasoning portion, let's get these babies out to the cooker. YouTube here we are first spritz about an hour into the cook looking awesome and we'll just spritz it with a 50-50 vinegar water YouTube, here we are. Look at those ribs, looking awesome, man. Look who joined the party. We got a rack of baby bags, and we got some chuck roast. Now, what we did, we went ahead and seasoned that chuck roast up, just like we did the uh, beef ribs, as well as the baby bag. This rack is the pure Texas rub. This is just salt pepper, and this is this rack, this rack, and this roast right here has the uh, Texas rub that I made that has the only difference is the garlic and the paprika. Um, and this one is seasoned up just like I would do any of my briskets. Uh, it has the Jimmy's rub, um, all purpose seasoning, as well as some garlic. And we cap it off with a little bit of uh, steak seasoning there. Um, we're gonna get a spritz on these. And these are looking like they about ready to be wrapped. But I'm gonna give them another 30 minutes and then we'll wrap them. We're gonna get a spritz on them. check these in about 30 minutes all right we'll be back all right youtube here we are we're spritz number two 
for our ribs, our roast. And after spritz number three, we went ahead and wrapped our ribs. We're gonna get those ribs in check, but first let's get some moisture on these ribs. And on this roast, looking good. Alright, we're gonna check our ribs and see how they're looking. They've been in cooking wrap for about an hour. So we're gonna give those a look. We'll be back. Alright, YouTube, we're gonna shift some things around inside the cooker. We're gonna move our second rack of beef ribs to the top, and we're gonna put our roast on that second rack. Why? Because we're gonna add something else to the cooker. Yep. Some bacon wrap, peanut butter, and jelly sandwiches. Like, what? Yeah, my son saw this on one of his social media channels and wanted to give it a try. I said, why not? So we got some bacon wrap PBJs on that bottom rack. Alright, this rack of ribs I felt could go a little bit longer wrapped, so we're going to let them go a little bit longer. Um, and we're going to check this other rack and see how they look. Man, they smelling right, tell you that. Yeah, they looking good, good pull back. So we're going to go ahead and pull them out of the wrapping, let them go. We're going to check them after 30 minutes and then we'll go, go from there. All right, folks, the moment we've been waiting for, bacon wrap PBJ for peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Look at that bacon, nice and crispy. Man, it's smelling right. I'm going to tell you that now, but it doesn't sound very appetizing. Bacon wrap peanut butter and jelly, but man, the bacon is making the case here. It's smelling so good. I'm actually looking forward to tasting it. All right, here it goes. Hmm. Quite surprised. It all works. Tastes pretty good. The saltiness from the bacon, sweetness from the peanut butter and jelly. The bread is toasted, and this works. I can't believe I'm eating this, but yeah, this is right on. It works. All right, YouTube, our... Uh Looks like our um, roast is done. We got 206 and then um, we got that slab of baby backs in there that's wrapped. So we're gonna get those unwrapped and uh, let them go um, unwrap. And then uh, we'll be back. All right, YouTube, you see that uh, we got the ribs wrapped on the top rack. We're gonna get those out of the foil and you can see on that bottom rack, those are our roast. I left those in a pan because um, I wanted the uh, captured uh, jus um, that the roasts make during its cooking process and um, I like to reintroduce that back to the meat when I go to serve it. Makes for an awesome presentation as well as taste. So we're going to let these ribs go and we're going to check them for 30, after 30 minutes and we're back 
Let's see how these babies look. They're looking right. I'll give you guys a look here. Excuse the lighting. But yeah, these are right. These are going to work. They're ready to go. Alright, YouTube, here we are. Our ribs are rested. This rib right here on my left is the one that um, has the rub that I put together. The salt and pepper, paprika and garlic. And this one right here is the pure Texas rub. Salt and pepper. Fresh cracked pepper or fresh ground pepper. Um, and culture salt. Man, it's only like a night and day difference. I don't know if it's because of all the pepper or... No, it's actually got more of a darker red color or mahogany color. Awesome. But we're going to get these babies sliced up so we can see what that smoke ring look like. Mind you, these were smoked or cooked with using post oak pellets. So let's get these bad boys cut open and let's see what we're working with. All right, here we are, you two check out that smoke penetration beautiful smoke ring on both racks wow all right folks here we are the baby backs the baby backs with the Texas rug and look at that beautiful smoke ring man this is awesome yes we cooked those with post oak pellets love the color it's a dry rub just a salt and pepper paprika garlic man those look incredible Here we are, folks, a group shot. The beef ribs, baby back ribs. Cooked on the Pit Boss Brunswick. Use some post oak pellets. It speaks for itself. And what you can say, look at that. Beautiful smoke penetration. Awesome smoke ring. And the only thing left to do is give one a try. All right, YouTube, last but not least, the Chuck Rose came out beautiful. Look at that smoke ring. The lighter color one, of course, is the one that uh, has the uh, Texas rub that I made, salt, pepper, garlic, paprika, and the darker one has the Jimmy's rub with the steak seasoning on top. And I'll tell you, I was not, I just can't believe I'm getting this type of results out of a uh, pellet cooker, but proof is in the pudding and you can't argue with these results very very impressed with the performance and the moment i've been waiting for let's give the piece a try this is the chuck roast And never in my wildest imagination I'd have communication with my cooker. Yeah, let's shut it down. We want to wish you much success on your next cook. And from the family and crew of Jimmy's Barbecue, season's greetings. 
And we also want to wish you a very prosperous 2021. Thanks for watching.